Welcome to the module on link analysis. In this module, we are going to discuss different entities that have got associations among themselves. Link analysis refers to a collection of techniques that are applied to data that is represented in the form of nodes and edges. That is, nodes being entities that have associations or relationships represented in the form of edges. Now this is very much different from data mining where we observe that either in case of supervised learning or unsupervised learning, the instances in the training data do not have any association with each other and therefore they are processed in isolation. So in order to apply link analysis, we have to assume that the information about the relationship among the entities exists in the data and the focus of link analysis techniques is to analyze such relationships among entities. Link analysis is not something completely new to humans. It has been around for years. However, in the time when there were no computers, such analysis were carried out manually. Now let's just consider a scenario where the law enforcement officials have to investigate a crime. So, they would draw a network where the nodes would represent the people, weapons, scenes of crime, etc. And they would find associations and relationships between these nodes. Once a network of such relationships is drawn, the bigger picture of the crime emerges from the details. And that is going to help towards finding the actual culprit. In some cases, the network may not be complete and may have holes. In that case, further investigation may be carried out to identify the missing links that would complete the network and give a much clearer picture of how the crime was conducted. Link analysis is found to be very fruitful for search engines as well. In the early days of the internet, the search engines used to identify the relevant pages to any given query based on their cosine similarity or TF-IDF similarity. However, such a system can be fooled very easily. For example, if we consider a scenario where a web page does not have any meaningful content but has the keywords redundantly produced and according to any of these similarities, it's going to get high score in similarity and is going to be suggested as a relevant page because the keywords are frequently available but the overall content does not make much sense and therefore people started to abuse such algorithms. Few years down the line in 1996, it became very much clear that similarity based on content alone is not going to be sufficient because as we said earlier that can be easily manipulated by the users. So different approaches were being tried to come up with a better mechanism. Classification technique was also tried for any given keyword it would recommend a number of relevant pages while the problem is to present only 30 or 40 pages and that also in the decreasing order of their relevance. So there was a dire need to come up with something new that would deal with this situation. Now if we think of the time before the communication technology in those days, people used to get popular in their profession through the word of mouth. That is, people would praise their excellence in social gatherings and the word would go around and they would get popular. This approach is still very much active in promoting businesses and the term is called viral marketing. The reason why it is always successful even in today's time is that people trust the recommendations of friends and family members or those that they know personally in comparison to the ones that they do not know. Now consider the World Wide Web as such a virtual society where pages are people and hyperlinks are the associations or the communications between these pages. So using this phenomenon, communities of pages can be identified that are on special interest. Just like people are friend with a particular number of people the web pages share common interest with a small number of pages and the same way we have all the pages being part of one or multiple communities. 
using the same context in a relatively similar scenario if we consider the email senders and receivers as actors and emails being a form of communication or relationships between these people we can identify the communities of employees within an organization so this was the time when instead of dealing with pages as isolated resources was not giving the desired results and therefore researchers were more interested in looking into these web pages as virtual social entities that are associated with each other in other words they were more interested in exploring the relationships of these web pages through the hyperlinks so therefore in order to investigate the associations and relationships among web pages the two main types of network analysis techniques that were presented were based on centrality and prestige so in the next few lectures we are going to explore them in detail